workshops. Uh, we have Pan from Protocol Labs, IPFS Filecoin um, here to do a workshop on build 3D voxel characters and the magic of voxel. Um, and questions go in the Zoom chat. If you have any, um, Pan will leave them all till the end. So definitely stick around. And with that being said, I'll hand the mic off to Pan. Thanks a lot, Anna. And hello, everyone. Um, I'm Pan. I am a Filecoin IPFS advocate. Um, yeah, I'm very passionate about design and great graphics. Uh, in fact, I, I began my career as a designer a few years working as an artist and then got into coding. I uh, was trying to animate computer graphics. Uh, so it's safe to say that I'm really happy to be here. Today, um, I'm very excited to be given this opportunity to teach you how to model your very first voxel game characters using this open source 3D voxel editor, Magical Voxel. And um, if you haven't heard of voxels before, um, this is just like a very brief uh, introduction. Uh, what are voxels, uh, you ask? Voxels are just like, 2D pixels, except they live in three dimensions. So if you have painted using early Microsoft Paint program, then it's very similar, except in magical voxel, you will be painting in uh, X, Y, and Z axes instead. And why, why are building voxel style uh, for our games, right? Like what are the benefits? Uh, what I can think of is uh, for one, um, it is really quick and easy to model and gives your NFT or game a better time to market, right? Like you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to hire uh, like a, a really ex um, experienced 3D modeler or anything like that. If you want to launch your NFT project or a game, anyone can actually model your voxel characters. It has the nostalgic look and feel of the, those 8-bit, you know, Nintendo games. So it's really, really relatable to the general audience and not just hardcore gamers. Um, voxels are highly configurable uh, because they are very modular, right? So as you can see, so it is much easier to create variations, attributes, and props for your NFTs or game characters. If you have done some gaming in the past few years, you might have come across this, this really awesome game, uh, Crossy Roads, um, being shown here on the screen. It was a really popular arcade game a few years back where the player sort of control an animal character, um, the most prominent one being a voxel chicken, um, to cross the roads and just dodge the obstacles like cars and trains. The game actually popularized the modern voxel style game. And you know, since then, there have been many knockoffs and other games being inspired by Crossy Roads um, to go all voxel style, you know, after the success of Crossy Roads, of course. Um, Minecraft, yeah, I, I forgot to mention this, of course. Minecraft, it's probably like the first ever 3D game that made voxel style so popular. So that's kind of a legend up there. For what is word, I think there's a pretty good chance Crossy Roads use magical voxel for their game design as well, um, because my magical voxel is free and anyone can use it. Um, so, but if you know anything better, just please let me know. Hey, Pan, sorry to interrupt you really quick. Uh, we we can see your speaker notes. Not sure oh, if really? you have them up on purpose or not. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Let no worries. Just that. wanted to let you know. Okay. Cool. All right. Better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So today we'll be modeling this kit. Um, here's this kit. Uh, it's our final coin resident 4G. Um, biscuit. This is the hackers. Hackers biscuit. Um, we will spend a bit of time getting to know our way around um, magical voxel UI and some of the components here. Then we will talk a bit about um, the basic of designing uh, and building voxel characters from my experience as a designer. 
you know, just enough to whet your appetite and get you playing afterward. Um, and then I'll dive into building the Corgi model while we learn how to use the tools in Magic of Voxel by learning by joining, because I believe um, getting your hands dirty is a lot more fun than just listening to me lecturing. Uh, then in the end, if we have some time left, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions from you. Or otherwise, you know, if otherwise, we feel free to join our Fine Coin Slack or DM me on Twitter or Discord. Um, my Twitter username is at Pansy Shane, P A N C Y C H A I N. And my Discord username is Pansy, P A N C Y, Pansy, hash 5150. Um, so before we begin, um, we need Magic of Voxel, of course. Uh, so please go ahead and use the link to download here, the first link um, on the screen. If you'd like to um, just, just follow through with this workshop. And um, also the second link here is uh, it's pretty optional. Um, you can download OBJ to GLTF using NPM to use as a command line tool or, or JavaScript library on your front end to convert OBJ models to GLBs. And what, what is the GLB format? Um, GLB is a, is a 3D file format that's using um, or all kinds of stuff online like VR, AR, uh, web apps, you know, it supports uh, motion animation, um, it also is very fast because th it has a very small size. So um, GLB files are, are uh, kind of like a binary version of, if you have heard of this, it's the GLTF, um, GL transmission format file, which uh, uses JSON instead, so it's human readable. Um, GLB is not human readable, um, but it's very popular format to be used on the web um, just because it loads very fast. Um, so um, the command line uh, OBJ2 GLTF command line is totally optional, but highly recommended. I can see someone is having fun um, sketching on the screen. That's cool. Someone is being creative here. Okay, um, let's go on to modeling your design. All right. So I'm, I'm assuming that um, a lot of you are design engineers or, you know, you have some, you know, design passion here, um, and that's why you're here. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to model your design um, in the perspective of a designer or modeler. Um, so you can see here, all I have to start with was this um, 2D cartoon version of the Corgi. Um, I didn't have much to start with, uh, so it was pretty fun also because it left a lot of rooms for creativity and interpretation. Here are the keys to modeling your voxel characters. The first is to capture a few distinct qualities of a character, um, you know, apart from colors. Colors are surprisingly are very, are the least important representation of something. Um, for instance, if one day I just turned green and my hair turned red, you, you would still be able to tell it's me, right? So we, we, we don't think of colors as being the identifying trait. We just, we can use them as a uh, variation in your NFTs or, or whatever. Um, as an example, you can see the Corgi here. What I think makes a Corgi, a Corgi, um, are maybe the long upward neck and the big chest. Like, you know, it's a very proud dog, right? Like when it's, it's walking or it's, it's standing straight, it looks very proud. <clears throat> and of course, um, compared to its, its, you know, its, its stature, um, it has a very stubby, uh, has a very stubby set of legs. 
Um, and of course, the chunky and much bigger hind legs and the buttocks. So these are the qualities you want to capture in your when you model your velocity characters. And here are some more examples of um, you know modern voxels after pixel-based art. As you can see to the right is the 2D version of the artwork or design from this music video Gimme Proof um, from Firepoint. Um, and to the right hand side are the voxel models I created. Um, the second key um, to modeling your design, your voxel, is to get the right proportion of a character. Here you can see the pickle heart character here, um, the, the rapper guy here. Um, his iris, he's, um, the, the black spots in the eyes, are clearly one unit pixel in the, in the 2D version, right? So that could be converted to a unit voxel one-to-one in 3D. And I started with that. And the rest kind of followed and related to it. Since pixels and voxels are very similar, um, the challenge, the only challenge I think, lies in interpreting the depth of or the size of the model based on the 2D pixels. You know, so I did um, some guesswork around that. Um, that is where you get to be really artistic and creative about your, your modeling. And after all, it's really all about not taking your original designs literally and really make sure the voxel models look great on their own. Okay, so let's, let's dive into Magical Voxel UI and Control. And I'll let's go really quickly. Okay, so I, I I hope by this time, if you wanted to follow through, you already have magical voxel on the screen. Um, but if not, um, this session is recorded, so you should be good to go later. Um, if you can see here to the right hand side of the screen of the magical voxel UI here. And that's the color palette. So it should be um, it should be really familiar to a lot of you uh, who have done some editing, um, graphics editing before. Um, so let's just choose this the colors and whatnot here. They have some predefined colors, and right down here um, you could see um, you could also add your own colors. And okay, here um, to the right hand side of this color palette is the brush pane. The brush pane is really important. It's actually where you um, you will be using a lot. Um, the brush pane here. Most of the time, you'll be using the three brushes here: the voxel brush, face brush, and box brush. And for each brush, you could actually um, choose an action. Attach action, erase action, or paint action. Let me show you yours. So let, um, I'm using the voxel brush, and then I choose the erase action. As you can see here, you can sculpt away voxel by voxel. So that's pretty cool. All right. And, um, the attach action, I'm still using the voxel brush, let you, let you build, you let you paint or, or add voxels in any color that you like. Keep in mind that voxels are like pixels. So, you know, they're the smallest units here. There you go. And of course, paint. Paint means you can paint the existing voxels in any color that you like. Again, you can see that we're painting the whole voxels, okay? We're not painting just um, any side of the voxels. We're painting the whole voxels. The face brush here is very interesting. Um, it lets you deal uh, with the whole face, contiguous face. Let's see this face. I want to erase this face. There you go. 
So I can erase it face by face. I can switch to attach mode, and that would just add more faces. And of course, paint. You can paint it face by face. Oh, and by the way, um, you know, just how you rotate your model and, you know, um, you know, zooming or panning is very similar to any other um, 3D modeling software here. There's not, there's no surprise here. And last but not least, the box brush here um, just allow you, it's very similar to the voxel brush that allows you to kind of build planes of voxels instead of like, you know, dots of voxels you can build planes. It's it's pretty handy. Okay, let's move on to um, down here um, below here below the brush pane. You would see the um, the view pane here. So you can let's delete the model here. So it's right. Okay, you can. Um, you can choose how your 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 space will look like. You can turn off turn on the edge. You can turn off and on the grid and the frame stuff like that. And of course, um, the the center here is the editor where you mostly work with your model. Um, and then to the right hand side of of your editor window here is the edit pane here. So what you can do. Okay, wait. what you can hear is that you can delete your model, you can flip your model, and you can scale your model. And there's a lot more things you can do uh, to transform your model. And um, to the right hand side here is the project pane. So that's where you can, you know, save and, you know, open your projects and stuff like that. And the last one here is the um, export pane here. So that's where you export your model into some other file formats like OBJ, for instance. OK, so without further ado, let's try to dive into building our Corgi. Um, I'm going to show you this Corgi really quickly. No. All right, and this is Biscuit, our resin Gorgi. I can render it as well. Um, so Magical Voxel has a really decent um, built-in renderer, as you can tell. So let's start with this. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to delete the model. Oops. Okay. Really quickly. Okay. Um, so if you're starting here from scratch, just delete your whatever model you, you're seeing on your screen and then um, make sure your your space is set to 40 by 40 by 40. Um, so you have some some room to work with. Okay, and right now I'm just kind of bringing up the the Corgi. So here, okay. So keep in mind that um, you know I'm modeling from the model that I I've built already. Um, if you're you know, in real life, you'll probably be modeling from, from sketch or from 2D sketches and stuff. So it would just like take a bit more work here. Okay. Um, so for me, I like to start with the snout of the dog. Um, it's just like a, a very easy place to start. So let's see. I think I should start with a uh, four by four voxel cube. So let's start with a um, with a box brush and attach action, and then let's do it um, four by four. There we go. Go 
very good. Um, let's change the color to something more realistic here. Boom, okay. And then um, I'm switching to the face brush and attach action so I can extrude it up four of also units. Okay. And then I'll switch to Volto brush and then paint mode, paint action here. And then I'll just paint the nose. And watch this. This is something that's really handy here. Um, go to the mirror op um, option here, right under the brushes, and then click X. What it does is it lets um, you kind of copy whatever you're working on across the X axis, um, you know, sort of like reflecting your work to the opposite side, which is really handy because a lot of times your, your Volto characters are symmetrical. Um, so I'm going to show you this. So I'm just going to paint the nose and see this, you know, it just automatically um, painted the other side as well. And then I'm just going to use the Volta brush and the erase action to sculpt away the mount a little. That's it. I've got the snout. And then I use the move tool, move it up a little bit so it's easy to work with. Okay, and I just kind of go around here. Let's do the head of the dog here. Let's start with the box and then let's do the orange, brownish orange for the skin tone. Okay, and then, sorry, attach the box. There we go. Switch to face, brush, and then um, use attach action to extrude it a little bit here. Note that we're still doing the mirror thingy here. So that's why it's, you know, if I, right now I'm on a face brush, I'm using the face brush and then attaching the voxels. I'm gonna do this offset. Yeah, so you can see the um, your work set actually being reflected on the other side is pretty cool. Um, attach, I'm gonna extrude this up one, two, three, four for voxel units. Great. Now let's paint the eyes here. Um, let's see, should be around. Okay, sorry. Voxel brush and then paint action. And voila. Okay, I'm happy. Let's do the iris. It's pretty awesome. Okay, let's now let's move on to the ear. It's the box brush attached. Let's do the ear here. Oops, now that's a different color. I can use the eyedropper to select the color that I want from the model too. That's what I did. Um, the box brush attached. There you go. Nice. All right. And then I use the box brush again. Just kind of build something here. And then the face brush. I use the face brush to extrude it up all the way. All right, and then I use the voxel brush and the erase action to just kind of sculpt away the parts I don't need. Right, and then I use the face brush and then erase action to just get rid of the whole thing. Now um, I can select the, the paint here and then I can paint with a voxel brush I can paint the inside of the ear. Like that. Okay, so we're kind of almost there. This is like the hardest part to head actually. And then um, let's paint this part here as well. Okay. I'm happy here. Now we're going to use the face brush and then attach, and then we can extrude this. Oops, sorry. I like the orange color. Extrude it all the way to the ground that and then let's approximate here um, I need it to be a little taller so I'm gonna 
this up here. And then I'm just going to use the face brush to extrude that more. And then let's approximate this body. Use the box brush and detach to create like uh, a plane for his body. Like that. And then face brush to extrude it. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to move them up a little bit more like that. Okay. I'm happy with the size. Then I'm just going to use the voxel brush to erase this part. I don't need to use the face brushes better. There we go. Much faster. Okay. And let's start modeling the legs. Let's do this. Okay, before that, let's just paint this, this part here. Take the light yellow and then paint. All right, um, that's just uh, my detail here. We can just kind of paint that. There we go. Okay, um, let's use the box brush and then attach to make the base for the front leg. It should be around that, um, maybe bigger. And then um, that, and then use the face brush to extrude all the way to the ground. Okay, I kind of like the length of the legs here. So I'm just gonna, oops, sorry. Just to switch to the box brush and then do this. Okay, um, so I have a, a pair of nice planes, box of planes for the front legs. Pretty great. So I'm just gonna paint the socks for the, this guy here. Voxel paint, oops. Use the paint and then paint away. Okay, and then I use the face brush again and then just kind of extrude it out a little. Oops. There we go. And then let's do the hind legs here. Alrighty, it's just the box brush again. And then the hind leg should be slightly higher up here. Okay. All right, and again, we use the box brush to define the plane and then the face brush to extrude down all the way here. And then you use the box brush to kind of, oh, we can just sculpt this away actually. So use the box brush and erase action and make his hind leg a little round and cute like that. Okay, I'm happy here. Okay, and then um, let's stay with the voxel brush and then paint the socks. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, I forgot to choose the paint, voxel, and then paint away. Okay. All right. I'm kind of happy here. Use the face brush and then just extrude it so that they are as thick as the front leg. Again, sorry. Okay. Face attached. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. You sort of like have the whole thing and just the tail here. So I'm just going to turn it off the mirror option here because it's just easy. Um, let's just also erase, make his butt top a little rounder. And then um, the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe a little bit too much.
Okay. All right. And then I use the box brush. Just maybe make one more here, up here. And that's it. And boom, we have the Corgi. Okay. Um, if we should have some time here. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, what you can do is that if you press tap, you enter the word mode. So with the word mode, you can sort of just move things around without touching the model. So you don't have to, you, you, you can't edit the model directly, but you can sort of move things around. And uh, in the word mode, this is where you work on separate um, isolated components. Um, so you can you can choose to work on um, the legs, the face, and your heads and ears and stuff like that as separate components, which is pretty handy. Um, so let's say if we choose this uh, space and then we press tab to go back to the editing mode, we won't be able to touch our origin model because we're in the, a different local space, uh, which is pretty handy because right now, so that you can just kind of um, model something else entirely isolated from your other models. Okay. All right, now it's the time to go to export. It's, okay, let's save this first. All right. Um, let's duplicate this. Yes. And then um, let's put some name here, biscuit, clone one, save, boom. And then now you can export to OBJ. Um, here, let's find this clone one. All right. So you can save it here. And then Let's switch to our terminal here. This is totally optional, but um, kind of recommended here. So, you know, if you have downloaded OBJ2 GLTF here, this is where you can use it. Um, you see the um, in the folder here, you can see a lot of a bunch of files, OBJ files um, and MTL files, material, you know, PNG files for the textures. Um, so it's kind of difficult to handle all these files uh, when you know totally online. So you use this command line obj to gltf to just kind of you know um, convert the obj file to this glb file here. And this glb file right here is very small, and you could totally use it for your NFT store and stuff because everything is self-contained. You have material, color, everything you are you see in your editor will be embedded in that single file, um, which is pretty convenient. So um, yeah, um, congratulations if you've been following through. You have created your first. Uh, voxel module. Um, um, it's it's pretty. It's it's not basic. Um, you know um, the biscuit model. It's really really a good start here. And um, hold on. Where's my screen? Okay. So the next step, I, the next steps I recommend is to try to upload your um, GLB files to NFT or storage. Um, and use the CID to fetch and display your 3D creations on your NFT store or game. And you can also, um, you know, just um, use um, the JavaScript library of NFT.storage as well if you want to uh, programmatically do that on your front end web application. Um, you can also try to import your OBJ model into Blender and add some um, rickings kinematics and use them in the game engine like Unity. Uh, also check out Adobe Mixamo, Mixamo I think. Um, so after you rig the model, you could plug in some predefined animations 
and start seeing your characters animate without having to do any work. And again, thank you for being here. Uh, I hope this has been fun and useful for your NFT and gaming projects um, in the future or within the Build Quest event. Um, if you need some help or questions, again, just hit me up on Twitter, Slack, or Discord. Um, I'd be willing to help. Is there a question? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, maybe a minute more to answer um, a few questions. Feel free to come off mute if you want to ask your question live. Yeah, I think he's. Um, yeah. Hello. Oh, hey, David. What's up? <laughs> uh, what's up? Sorry, I think I, I I didn't have the correct. Setup. Um. Yeah, my question is: Uh, is it possible to uh use uh an image right of a drawing? um as a background so i can use it you know to sort of um replicate it on magica voxel maybe i missed um, that so can you repeat the question again about the background yeah i have an illustration and i would like to use it uh, as a background so maybe again or like you know in cinema for this you can put them in one of the views and sort of it is your guideline not to then mold it into a 3d object so I was thinking maybe here I could use an image and then kind of like through the voxels. Yeah, yeah, the... totally. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I think you can totally do that. Okay. How how would I do that? Um. So I I I I'm not sure at the top of my head, but um, I can find out the answer for you. All right. Super. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you want to, you want to hit me up on, on Twitter or, or anything? Yes. You can follow up on this. Definitely. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for your question. Does anyone have any other questions for Pan? Awesome, so uh, we can end this workshop here then. Um, that was super interesting, Pan. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing that and I think everyone else did too. Uh, so uh, thank you, Pan, for taking the time out of your day to do this workshop for the BuildQuest hackers. Um, for the rest of you, if you have any questions for the IPFS team, um, that you can reach them on uh, both the ETH Global Discord and their Discord. Um, and with that being said, we have more more sessions or workshops um, planned for the rest of the day. So definitely hope to see you at all of those as well. And once again, thank you, Pan, for um, doing this really, really interesting workshop. Thanks, Anna. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, feel free to just reach out to me if you have any more questions or need any help. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone.